Welcome, welcome to another episode of the marvelous and majestic world of painting. So, for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to do a lovely, marvelous and majestic lighthouse of epic proportions. And you may be asking yourself, where is his canvas? It's not on his art table. Well, it's right here, silly goose. So, whoops a daisy. I need to move off this. There we go. Alright, so now we got some room to work with. We don't want all that in the way when we're doing all this and that. So, let's uh, apply some black gesso to our painting, and that'll be our first step. Let's get to it. Sorry I lied, we're not doing the black gesso just yet. I wasn't really lying, I just am unorganized and I do steps all sporadically. So this is what we're doing next. So we're going to map out where our sky meets our water and where our land meets our water. So we're going to go below center, about right down yonder, right down yonder, okay, and we're going to roll out the old taperoonie. Applying it in a straight fashion. Here's the straight. And we're going to come a little less than halfway in. And I'm just going to cut kind of a curve here on the tape. I'll show you when I get my big old hang out of the way. Right there, that's just about what I want right there. Okay, and this is going to be where our land is. This is where our water is going to be. This will help map out. Oops, a daisy. This will help, help map out where our water will be right in this vicinity. Sky will be up yonder, obviously. So now we can start applying our black gesso now. So to apply our black gesso, I'm just going to Take a sponge brush. I'm just gonna get a tiny bit of water on there. Get the excess off a little bit. And roll this in my gesso. There we go. So I think I'm gonna outline my edge here a little bit. This in. Let's see, how about I want to come above the water? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to congratulate you on your hard work on this arduous step we just completed. So, the next step is to sketch out our lighthouse for this painting. We're going to come about right here.
And there we have our drawing for our lighthouse, ladies and gentlemen. Up top here, after we apply our paint, I'm going to add a gargoyle. But first, we're going to go ahead and do our sky and surrounding areas, and then we're going to paint the lighthouse part last. I'm going to go ahead and add some liquid white to our sky. La la la, la la la. Gonna apply some liquid white. Liquid white, liquid white. Gonna put a coat of liquid white on the canvas. Yeah, we got a brush here in the painting. Let's get that out of there. And go like so, ladies and gentlemen. Like so. And when we come up and around here, I'm going to use a smaller brush so I can very methodically go right around our lighthouse. I don't want to cover that up. Right, so I'm going to get going with this and we'll be right back after these messages. So for this painting, I want to have a very light blue at the top of our sky. Very light blue. I'm going to have a lot of white in this. Thalo blue is a very, very strong color. I'm going to lighten it a little more. It's looking pretty good. Now let's put that same color on our bigger brush. So we're going to come about to right here, and we'll blend a beautiful orange color from the bottom. A little more paint on the brush. There we are. X motions that'll blend this color real nice on there. And I'm just taking this here brush and going along the edges very carefully as you can see up here. And as uh, we paint our sky, we want to have the brush run out of color as we get further and further down here. And down here we're going to have the orange glow from the sun go up. So this can be a very, very light blue. Very I think that's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and mix this up an orange color. Alright, so let's go ahead and go into some alizarin crimson, some cad yellow. A little bit of, a little bit of white to it. Orange. It doesn't matter what brush you use. You could even use this one if you want, but I'm just going to stick with this one. I want it to be brighter in this on this side of the canvas too. And the, the orange will start to dissipate as we get further over to uh, the right side. Because the sun is more on this side. Alright, so now since we've laid a base for our orange, we'll start to venture up more into the blue. 
orange will get lighter and lighter. Lumen blue meets. In that area, the blue is getting lighter and lighter. I pretty much just blend it the same exact way with the detail brush right here. So I'm going to go over that and do this area, and we shall return shortly after these messages. All right, now it's starting to look like a sky, so I'm just going to lightly go over it, get out our brush strokes, bring everything together. see it, but I'm getting out several brush strokes here. Just want to go straight across, very lightly. Okay, now let's start putting in some clouds. Alright, so let's make a nice lavender color. Let's go into some of that phthalo blue. There's a little crimson. blue side, so we're going to go into some more red and some more white. There we go. Now we're cooking with some wonderful pork lard. Alrighty, so we got our lavender on our brush. Now I'm going to keep a little area open where our sunlight's coming through. And I'll start the clouds small. So they appear far away. So let's uh, we'll start right here. We want maybe have some of those little stringy clouds. Oh, so very far away. So far away. They're so far away. Clouds are all the way, maybe over in Antarctica or something. That's how far away they are. And as we get further and further up our canvas, be larger in size. That one's a little closer. that one. So far away it's not even on planet Earth anymore. That little one right there. Getting a little more detail in the clouds. It's getting closer to us. But still maintaining a distance of a long way away. Continue over here, but we have beautiful cloud spreading across our canvas. But I would say Sometimes you see clouds in the sky that look like they're not real. Look how that color glow. Swirl this up more. The heavens. Uh, just, you know, so 
smaller or bigger? That gives us our perception of distance, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll brighten these up with pink highlights. We'll show our sun reflecting on them. And I'm going to do a few more of these and we will return shortly, ladies and gentlemen. Oops. Hurt my foot on that art table. Ow. Just still working away right, right now. on the side. And to smooth out the clouds, I like to just gently get out some of those obvious swirl motions. Okay, we need a few. We don't want a pattern of them. This brush is very soft, so I can use the corner of it like a blender brush. Works very well. All right, so we got our wonderful clouds set in place. Now let's go ahead and add some pink highlights to those, ladies and gentlemen. And there we have it, folks. A beautiful sky of glorious wonders on a Sunday evening. Now, we're going to go ahead and take off our tape right here. There we are. Okay, and now we're going to apply liquid white to this area here. And we are going to create us a vast ocean of mystery. I said liquid white, but I actually meant liquid clear. This is liquid clear. And you don't want to put much on the brush. Okay. And we're just going to fill in the white part here, and we'll be back. Let's mix up a beautiful watercolor. If you've seen, let's see, episode one, if you've seen episode one, you will have seen this color before. It's pretty easy to make. Thalo blue, thalo green, and titanium white. with that beautiful teal color. I think we about got it. That looks beautiful. Alright, I'm just going to go into my number 14 bright brush and go ahead and start putting that paint in. Just going to carefully where the sky meets. Do that first. And I'm just going to fill this all in. When you're doing your water, to give it a really good effect, go all the way down like this and do one wave at a time. When you do that, you get this ripple effect. It makes the water look real. And marvelous and majestic. See, it makes it look like there's really waves out there and they're coming closer and closer to you. Isn't that neat? Also, each wave that I'm doing 
Just look at that ripple effect. Isn't that neat? I push the excess paint to the top of the individual wave. Looks like there's really a wave out there. But as I was saying, when I'm coming closer to the shore, each wave I do, I'm adding just a touch more of phthalo blue. Because as we come closer, we want the water to get darker and darker. Out here, it's closer to the sun. This will give us a realistic effect to a painting. And then we'll start over here. Alright, so the water is now hitting these rocks and it's getting a little crazy. It's going all over the place. And it can be a little messy now. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we have formed our blue water, we formed our waves. We'll come back in a little while and do our white water, but first let's form some rocks, shall we? Alright, so we got some raw umber here, I'm going to take the slightest amount of some titanium white. And let me get a nice dark brown color here. Maybe just a little more white. That's about the color I'm looking for. I think let's throw a little more white in there. And I'm going to grab like a roll of paint. Let's drag back. And I'm going to start right here in this section. I do a little bit more white on the palette knife because I don't want the paint to be overly mixed. I kind of overly mixed it. And when I do the rocks, I just kind of graze along here. All that, all those little holes in your paint, gives it that good rocky effect. I'm just going to do the same thing here. It's going to be pretty dark here. This is probably in a shadowed area. We'll get more up here. We'll make it brighter. We're going to put grass towards the top. So we go a little bit up here, about right here. I'm going to make the color much brighter. We'll have much more light up near the top. So right now I want to make a rock color that sort of shows the sun reflecting off of it. Something like that, I'm thinking. Maybe a little more yellow ochre. That looks like Dijon mustard. Mixed with a little bit of ketchup. I think we got our color there. And the colors we're using for our next endeavor is yellow ochre, 
Burnt Sienna, and Van Dyke Brown. So, here we go. Start probably right about right there, and sort of go all over the place here. Van Dyke Brown in it, but I think we're getting the color we desire in our hearts. I'm just going to start filling in a bunch of areas right, right around this area. Now I want some of this color right here. I want some of that color. That's where you go mining for gold. Because it looks shiny. Let's continue. Grab some of that same rock color and just establish a shore. We're not doing rocks here, we're doing a little bit of a shore. Be nice and smooth. It starts to get rocky from this point onward. Well, folks, that concludes the rocky part of our painting. Let's move on to the grass. This area here will just be grass. A lovely valley. We can have a picnic down by the water in the shadow of the lighthouse. Sounds like a beautiful day. So we have some cad yellow, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, and sap green. I'm going to go heavier into the sap green. Grab a little bit of cad yellow. I'm going to do a little bright green. We'll get into some of these other yellows here shortly. Okay, starting in this area here. Green. And same goes for this area right up because the sun's hitting off of it. It's sort of picking up a little bit of that yellow ochre we had. Alright, so we got to mix in some of these other yellows. You just can't do flat green color throughout. Take a look at some scenery sometime and learn how the colors vary in the landscape. Now we have a little bit more of a yellowish brownish green color. Should really paint this first, but I'm going to throw the grass in right beneath it. Yeah, it won't be as... Well, I guess it could be a darker green. Because it's in a shadow of the building. But, not every blade of grass is the same shade of color, so... I think that'll work. Grab some more of that Indian yellow. Yellow ochre. We 
another shade of grass coming. A very lush, well watered valley. Young and old whippersnappers, almost done with the lawn. Just, just a matter of going back and forth between dark, light, medium light, medium dark, heavy dark, heavy light. And as I go further and further down, further away from the sun, I'm trying to get this to be just even more darker. I kind of skip a few areas, leave a little bit more of that black canvas showing through to give the appearance we are getting darker and darker with time. The great fireball in the sky quenches itself in the oceans far away. This shadow becomes darker. Right, I'm just going to take a number zero fan brush. I'm going to go straight into some titanium white. And I'm just going to highlight some of our waves here. Here, maybe we want waves kind of spilling over. What do you say? What do you say? We got a spiller here, ladies and gentlemen. Some splashers right around the rock. We got waves hit, hitting the rock. We need some splashers. Too big of a splasher because it's far away still. Small one there too. There we are. Come all the way to the end here. There we go. This looks pretty good. So what we got here? Let's put a few highlights. I don't want to kill everything we got already. Already here looks pretty good. Let me put a few of these in, just like that. Keep them straight too. This water's pretty much leveled out at this point. There we go. Something right there. Something right there. Something right there.
flashing right there. Maybe got a big splash right here. Big splash right here. Waves converge and just a, a mighty, mighty splash. Isn't that neat? Beautiful, huh? And there's a pretty good one here, too. think that about covers it. Maybe you want to have some slight highlights in between our waves, ladies and gentlemen. There's a in this way. Here, you'll hardly see it. Really let the paint run out on the brush. Maybe lightly, lightly dab this one. Lightly dab that one. about it. There we go. Quick and easy water, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so we need a base coat on our lighthouse. So I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of Van Dyke Brown. I don't want to have a perfect titanium white color. I'm going to throw a little bit of brown there. Just a touch. a dirty off-white color. For this task I'm going to take a number eight flat brush and I'm just going to block in all the white areas on our lighthouse. All right so I've laid in a base color on our lighthouse on our little housey and I've darkened the window of our staircase window and now it's time to put some highlights from the sun. All right, so I'm going to make a real light orange color. I'm going to take just a tiny amount of this bright red color. Sorry, probably grab too much. And a tiny bit of yellow. Just grab some more white. Real light orange color. With perhaps a hint of pink in it. That's about what we're going for. This is going to go on the left side of our lighthouse. I like it. Let's go with it. All right, let's start about right here. I think this color is going to be very nice. I don't want to overdo it. Kind of go in a, a round motion. This is a round building. Just kind of graze the brush across. Fade it out to nothing. Let's do that the whole way down. 
just filling in this little space here, made a great deal of progress. Alright, so I'm just going to go into some ivory black and I'm going to fill in our area here where we have our metal support system for our lighthouse. This area right in here, so let's fill that in. Okay, now we got that blocked in, let's mix us another fantastic color on our palette. Alrighty, so this will be for our support beam system that's going on underneath our little platform. This will kind of look like rust or perhaps the sunlight hitting off of uh, this the, the platform. I want to call it a staircase, not the staircase, that's inside. So, Alright, let's start with this little line we got here. So the fine tip on the brush. I'm going to fill this line in right now. Alright, so I think I'm going to marble this color a little more. We're going to do, a, we're going to do the support brackets. Support beams, brackets, whatever. There we go, perfect. Time to use the number zero tight spot detailer once more. And we're just going to use this for our little brackets we're making here. One right there. Got to get out of my chair for this one here. Way up high. Don't normally do paintings on this high of a canvas. Added just a slight touch of black to these here. And those are further away from the sun. Getting a little bit lighter color since we're coming around here. There we go. And I'd like to give you all uh, words of wisdom for today. My words of wisdom for today are paint something nice and if you do people will like it so I hope you will apply that to your heart and use that for your artist career alright just about done with the brackets here there we are Alright, I've wiped off the brush. I'm just going to go more into just a straight burnt sienna. Maybe a touch of that. Not a lot. Looks like a good rust color. Let's go up here. A couple of these brackets you're not going to see too well because they're straight on, but you'll see a couple here and there. That's a little dark, just shadowy. A little more paint on that side of the brush. I'm going to try to see a little more light. Paint. Here we are. A little more paint. Go back over these again. Fill the lines a little better. That'll work. Alright, so I'm going to make a blue black color here. Just going to grab some black, some white, and some 
phthalo blue. All I have is completely black. I want it to have a slight tint of blue. That is about what we want right there. Perfect. I right, picked this bluish gray color to do these lines for our window trim. So we're just going to basically just color these in like so for all of these sections here. Now that we have that, let's mix us another shade of blue, shall we? So for this color, I want to have it a little bit darker than our sky blue color, but a little lighter than our water color. I'm just taking phthalo green, titanium white, and some phthalo blue. And again, this will be for our lighthouse windows. I think that's about what we want right there. Let's give it a whirl, shall we? Okay, so now I'm just going to come in here and lock in each window. That's a beautiful color. And after this, we'll add some highlights of the sun hitting off of it. So just we'll just block in all the windows here. All right, got that filled in. Now we'll just go under some straight black. Go right here. I'm just going to fill this line in right here. Little ivory black. This line here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go to the tippy top of our lighthouse. Let's mix some Van Dyke brown and white for our shingle, shall we? Yeah, we got some white here. We got our Van Dyke brown. the color I'm looking for. Yeah, we're just going to fill this in and we'll do some little white highlights. Try and highlight our, our shingles on this side where the sun's hitting. Up here on this little ball and pointy antenna thingamajig, we shall do uh, some burnt sienna and white. Just a touch of white. And uh, we're going to come to this window here last. We're going to let this paint dry a while. Get the effect. What I want to do is kind of just graze over that. And have just a reflection of our sunlight. So I'm going to go ahead and fill all that in and we'll be back. Okay, so we got some of that color on there now. Um, as you can see, I've just gone straight into some titanium white and I've just lightly have gone like that with the brush just flat across the palette paper and it brings it to a fine sharp point that is what I'm trying to go for and I'm going to now highlight a few of these shingles here just ever so slightly just like so Smaller, smaller, up top. Just ever so slightly. All right, so you got the light side of it done. You want to do a shadow side of, for the shingles. Just simply go into a little bit of raw umber along with that titanium white. And just do the same exact thing. Bloop, bloop. do our sun reflection in our lighthouse window, my heart desires for you to grab a small brush, dip it into the slightest amount of ivory black, just the slightest touch, and then get off the excess, just like that. Leave very little on the brush. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's march up the old staircase of our lighthouse. 
come to the window and apply a shadow to the other side. Like this. Isn't that a neat little effect, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't that lovely? I think we got it, ladies and gentlemen. That'll do the trick. All right, I've mixed a slight touch of cad yellow and lemon yellow together. I think I'm going to bring my light source about right there. Go in a swirling motion here. I'll let all that dry before I did this. Give me some more color on the, the old brush, the old brush a rooney, the old eighth incher angular shader. Here we are. Here with less paint on the brush, just with very little paint on the brush, do the rest of it. We want it heavy right here though. Alright, now I shall obtain on the old 8th incher angular shader this one right here white right there much brighter that's our sun reflecting off Adding a little bit extra in on here, perhaps a little less off the brush. All right, I'll just fill in a little bit more of this. I thought that was a pretty cool effect. You got your blue behind there to indicate the true color of it. And then lightly graze over the top of it with our yellow colors and the white color. Isn't that cool? So now, as you can see, I have lightly sketched out a railing on top of our lighthouse. That's right. Lovely, marvelous, and majestic railing. I'll tell you what, on a lovely day such as this, I would be up on that balcony, looking over, watching the sunset, with a tall glass of lemonade in my hand, with a little umbrella. Couldn't do it if I didn't have the little umbrella. So, let's go ahead and color in our railing. Stop wasting time. So, I'm just going to take our Number two, script liner brush, flatten it out like we did earlier. And for each post, I'm just going to lightly tap like that. Lightly tap. All right, let's go ahead and do all those and we'll come back and do the next step. Keep up the good work, friends. We have now completed our guard whale. Let's just add a little bit of a shimmering light to it. We're just going to take some titanium white, get the blush, brush, da, 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 the brush real flat, like that. And we're just going to lightly come thither like so. Get the old noggin out of the way for you. Just a little bit. Just some highlights. Oh, 
doing the trick. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a special announcement for you all. Our lighthouse is now complete. That's right. We are fully done with our lovely lighthouse. Now, we shall move on to the house portion of the lighthouse. We are going to now mix a bluish color for our window trim and door. Tell you what, I've about run out of room on this here palette. Grab some blue, some black, and some white. I think I've overpowered the white some. If you uh, mix this paint up, make sure you turn it over. Not just do this motion all the time, you gotta grab it underneath, turn it over. But we need to add a little more white to that. I'm gonna gray it up some. Can you hear that pesky dog barking? He's a cute, cuddly little critter named Snoopy. Snoopy dog. He's my friend. I'm just going to take a number two script liner brush like we've been using and I'm just going to roll it into the paint. Just load the brush real nice and drag it straight one way. Here you want to come next to your pile of paint. Get the bristles real flat and chiseled. See I got that sharp point on it again. It'll help us do detailed work. Okay, so I'm going to do this window trim and we'll do the same color on our door. And when I come to this window, I'm going to lighten it up, just throw some more white in the same color because we got our sun hitting off of there. So let's go ahead and just block in our trim and door right now. Alright, so we got our blue trimmed down on our house. I'm just going to take some cad yellow and some burnt sienna and inside our windows I want to create that lovely amber glow. You know the glow I'm talking about. That warm glow feel you see coming through a Window of a lovely home. Uh, one more cad yellow. I don't want it too dark. You know that reddish glow I'm talking about? That will be the background light color, and then we'll build upon that. Alright, same thing we did before, we're doing some more high detail work, so let's come in here. I think that's pretty nice. Yep, that ought to do the trick. That'll be a nice glow through the windows. And on top of this, we'll put other layers. We'll, we'll put some bright yellow colors and then we'll finish it off with some white for the, you know, extremely bright colors. That'll be our, our brightest part of the light source. And we'll just fill these in like so, block all these in. Ladies and gentlemen, when we start applying our other layers of light, I think you're in for a real treat of epic proportions. I really do. All right, that completes the glow color. So now let's do a little bit brighter color now. But first I shall give the the old brush a wash down in odorless paint thinner. 
There we go. Nice and clean. And I'm going to use my handy dandy eighth inch angular for this next color. Alright, so we're going to mix some cad yellow and white. Something like so. Yeah, I think. Well, that was a little bit of that lemon yellow I got mixed in there. That looks pretty good. Kind of by accident. I think I have achieved a marvelous and majestic color. All right, so we got our yellow color mix that we're going to use for our next layer. I'm going to let that uh, burnt sienna and yellow dry a little bit. Uh, so we can easily apply our next layer. Uh, it'll look much better if I wait for that first layer to dry. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and paint this door a uh, blue color, same as I did the trim on the window. I think that looks like a good color. And we'll move on to our roof as we let our windows dry. Alright, so now we have a lovely blue door. And I'm just taking a small little paper towel and getting a little bit more of this excess paint off these windows. Just cut off a little corner of paper towel. And just lightly going over them. Getting off any excess paint. So we can move on to our next layer. Oh, okay, I'm sure you remember we got our lemon yellow, cad yellow, and our titanium white. Mix up just a little bit. And this is the next layer for our windows. And for this step, don't put too much paint on the brush. Let's lightly graze here. Or maybe I need a little more paint. <laughs> it's okay if it spills over uh, the, the window trim a little bit. light coming in. Going out pretty heavy is what I meant. That's what I mean. Still need just a touch more paint on the brush. Not getting enough on there. There. That's a lot better. Alright, we're just going to Go to each window and do that layer. Well, I'm just wrapping up with this layer here. And when you're doing this, uh, don't uh, cover up all of the back glow that we originally put on. Let some of that show through. Because it makes it look like there's a lot of light reflecting off stuff inside the house. We're not going to paint in detail the things in the house, the lamps and all that, but just keep that in mind. Let, let some of that show through. It makes it look like there's a lot of different things going on in there. And so after completing this lovely step, we're going to let this paint dry that we're putting on right now. And then I'm going to take titanium white only and we'll put a little bit over each window just kind of graze over it and it'll give us a little bit brighter uh, lights coming through the windows it'll look marvelous and majestic all right Looks like our house is coming to life. Let's put a roof on it now. Alright, so I'm going for sort of a reddish brown color. I'm going to some burnt sienna, some raw umber. Perhaps a touch of white. And the majority of the roof, actually all of the roof will be in in the shadowed light so this should work 
Alright, I'm just going to block the roof then now. Yep, that's going to be a good color. We're going to just fill this roof in like this. Alright, let's go heavy into some raw umber now. What we're doing here is shadow effect. So we'll indicate a shadow caused from this overhang. Beautiful. Okay, so for the overhang, I think we'll just do kind of the same color, but we'll add a lot more white to it. Let's see, let's get some white over yonder here. Alright, I think that's going to do the trick for us. Yeah, that looks nice. Alright, I'm just going to cover this part here. Yep, and it stands out because we have a different color going in right here. So I'm just going to block this in. Alright, so I got that filled in right there. I'm just going to come to the very edge here. Color in edge of the roof that's exposed on the other side. Just like that. And this part in between will be white trim along the border. Alright, very good. So we're done with the, the old roof. So let's grab the most delightful slightest pinch of ivory black. We're going to do some shadow color. Perfect. Alright, so we're just going to scrub in some of that black and darken this. Like so. And we'll do this section here and that section there. As you can see, we got our shadow down there now. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you was this. Uh, I put a slightly different color on my brush than what we had here on the roof, but I'm going to make some like little shingles. You can just kind of cut through this paint we already got on here. And give the indication of little shingles in here and there. That perfect. If you're far away, you're not going to always see every shingle. Just something to think about. Let's do a lovely, unique looking door, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, as I was pondering upon what I'm going to do with this door, I came to the conclusion I'm not going to have a blue door. I'm going to have a classic old, antique-looking wooden door. So let's go ahead and change it. So as you can see, I started to do a design underneath, but I went ahead and quickly covered it up because I was embarrassed to show you how bad it really was. So, I've just taken the liberty of mixing, lightly mixing, raw umber, I'm sorry, raw umber and titanium white. And uh, you mix the titanium white and it's very opaque. So that will give us the ability to go ahead and cover this blue right back up. Um, and I'm, I'm lightly dragging the brush down. I'm, this, I'm putting this paint on very thick because I, I thought of a, a neat trick we could do uh, to get our grooves for our individual boards in. And uh, just lightly filling in the, the little crevices here. And if we lightly drag down the paintbrush, we'll have all these little grooves happening in the paint, which will look like lovely boards. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Alrighty. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all life forms across the entire universe, our next step is to take our palette knife, and we want to evenly 
space out the individual boards. So let's go ahead and dive right in. There's one. There's another one. And we just want to cut through that paint. Just like that. go and try and do each board about the same width apart at least very very close that looks about right very good all right so let's get some shadows between those boards so we can identify where our boards lie we're just gonna go heavier into our black and then we'll get some white and we want to sort of gray it but keep it more to the black and that's about what we're looking for right there And here today on the Marvelous Majestic World of Painting, I invite you to do any kind of design that you want to do on your brackets or your door. This is just my preferred one. So, go ahead. Oh, and I got a little bit of paint thinner on my brush so we can go over this wet paint. Just a little bit. I should probably actually take a little bit off. Just a touch. Very good. Alright, so. This little fancy bracket, bracket here. Alright, so like we've done in previous episodes, we're going to get the slightest amount of titanium white, or no, liquid white, yeah, that one, on our brush, right, the slightest pinch, that much, perfect. Alright, let's just lightly graze over this and we'll get that soft white glow through our windows. This will brighten it up even more. Just kind of 
work that in. Grab another pinch. We stop about right there. Maybe we want to have the cutoff point be right there. Kind of have it spilling over the window trim a little bit. So it looks like it's coming through the window. This is a absolutely lovely effect. Very beautiful. We don't want to destroy all that golden, that beautiful goldenness we have. Be careful. Well, folks, this has been one adventurous painting. Look forward to seeing you again in future episodes. We're not quite done yet. We have a little bit more. And I've had much fun working on this painting. I've been in production now on this particular episode for about a month and a half. And well worth it. I've had much fun working on this one. And I hope you'll tune in to future episodes. If, you're, if you happen to be watching us on YouTube, I hope you will uh, subscribe to the channel. Give us a good old-fashioned like. Uh, comment. Uh, and tell us how bad I did. Um... Or, uh, you know, just, uh, I don't know. Tell me what you would like to see me paint. Uh, I'd love to hear your ideas. But, uh, it would fill me with warm feelings of marvelous and majesticness. It really would. It really would. I'm just going to finish up these windows here and we'll... Return soon for our final steps of the painting. And one last thing I would like to mention before we move on is when you're doing this liquid white step for your light coming through the windows, just really scrub that into the paint. Just really scrub it in. And when you lightly apply it, it becomes transparent. Very delicate with it, but yet firm. And it's okay if it spills over that trim a little bit. All right, and there you have it, our windows. Um, got started on the chimneys and forgot about it, so... Uh, Go ahead and finish that. 
for the uh, side that has the sun shining on it, I used a bright red color. For the shadow side, I'm just going to go into some alizarin crimson because it's a darker red. We'll do bright red on one, alizarin on the other. And I'll draw the brick lines after that. Okay, I got some titanium white on the brush, and I'm going to add a little bit of liquid white. Just turn the brush, bring it to a nice sharp point. All right, and as best as you can, do the you know brick pattern here. And sort of stagger it, you know, how you see the brick patterns in real life. And this doesn't have to be very bright, because this is sort of far away. recommend when you do this side add a add just a touch of black because that is in the shadowed side just enough to indicate a brick pattern from far away all right, let's grab our magical palette knives and go to our palette. So I got some sap green, black, Van Dyke brown, and Prussian blue. So let's mix up a nice dark color here. Okay, just going to go into a little bit of paint with our number 10 round brush. And we're just going to come here. And we're going to put some shrubs here. Some beautiful, lovely, marvelous and majestic shrubs. to the corner right here, start making the, the brush slightly taller because it's closer to us. Use the same color here too. Probably gonna want to make that slightly darker, but when we do our highlights, I'll just do darker highlights. Fill that in at the base. Leave it showing slightly. Almost done with this painting, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very proud of you all for your efforts. You've done fantastic, even though I haven't seen any of your work. But I trust that you've done a wonderful, marvelous, and majestic job. Come right up to the windows. Okay, that about does it for our background color of the shrubs. All right, let's work on our highlights here. I'm going to take some phthalo green, a little sap green. And I'm going to 
this a little bit. Make some more sense. I think we got a nice color going right there. Looks beautiful. So let's just come here and add some highlights. And also with that paint, I think I'm going to add a touch of cad yellow, Indiana yellow, yellow ochre. This really needs a shine in the sun, glisten, if you will. That looks marvelous and majestic, ladies and gentlemen. Some more yellow in there. There we go. All right, here goes nothing. That's not too bad. Perhaps we'll add a little more yellow. Really want it to glisten in the sun. Not that much, so kind of spread it out some. Sun's really hitting off this side of the house. Okay. And maybe we got a bunch of light coming out of here, off the window. We want to add just a touch of white. Touch. Maybe we even want some over here too. All right, now remember we need to keep the other side of the house on the darker side. We'll go ahead and add a touch brightness to it, but not a lot. So we'll keep it fairly dark. The main highlights on these will be from the windows. Plenty of dark here. We're going to come back through and do some flowers. And go ahead and just tap these lines of brush here. Not too much. There we go. Stands out a little more. Okay, and lastly, we'll go ahead and add a touch of white. To the top of the brush here. So we have our window illuminating onto the shrubbery. That ought to do the trick. All right, let's make some purple flowers. I think that'd be a nice touch. Let's go ahead and take some phthalo blue and some alizarin. Some perhaps some liquid white, some titanium white. Grab our 
grabbed way too much blue. There we go, that's pretty nice. Got the script liner brush once again, turned to a nice fine point. Let's just go ahead and dab in some color here. Try and do little designs. It doesn't look look like just some some old circle. And I've mixed a dark a little bit darker purple on this side. We'll go ahead and fill all these in. doing these little flowers, kind of space them out well and put like little dots maybe in between some of them so it doesn't look like such a uniform, you know, line up of them. See I just put some darker purple underneath just a touch of lighter purple over it. Use mainly just light purple on the front because the sun is blazing down upon it. And we'll have to give these flowers an immense amount of detail because they are far, far away. You know what, I think we should create ourselves a little bit of a pathway. The pathway to the lighthouse on the glorious shores of majestic wonders. Alright, so use, let's use the small side of the knife here. So let's grab some, a little bit of the titanium white, Van Dyke Brown. I think that'll give us a nice pathway color. Alright, so don't overmix your paint. And then just grab a little roll of paint on the end of your palette knife. And we're just going to come right here. And we're going to squeeze this area here. Grab a little more paint. This straight, but slightly go down here at an angle. Really, just just push that right into the canvas. going to kind of go off right here. We want to make sure this gets make sure this gets wider and wider as we come down here. It's got that cat brow right there. The door. brown. There we go. Alright, I 
think we have a lovely little pathway. All right, for the finishing touches, I think I'll just take some yellow ochre, Indian yellow, cad yellow. Let's just sort of do some little grassy things. All right, let's go ahead and just start off doing a few little sea oats finish this off. Actually meant to go the other way, but can't fix that. There we are. Add a little more paint thinner. Yellow ochre mixed with Indian yellow, cad yellow, makes a beautiful sea oak color. We'll add a little bit of our Van Dyke brown and white to that. We'll get the little ends of them. I'm just going to do a few more and we'll return. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to sign our painting. And for the sea oats, I decided to just keep it to just a few here and there. Maybe just a couple of going up the cliff. Kind of like the valley and the rock together, but not too much else. But you can do anything you want. You could put a clown standing right there in the middle of the valley. It doesn't matter to me. This is your painting. You do whatever you like to it. All right, so let's sign it. And as always, you can sign this painting however you want. What I do is take some titanium white, mix it with some liquid white, thin it down, and take the number two script liner and just roll it through and bring it to a nice point. And for today, I'm going to sign it here on the right side. Put it about there, beautiful. And I always love being able to finish a painting and signing it and knowing that my work has been complete for that painting. Hope you enjoyed this painting. really appreciate it if you would uh, let us know what else you'd like to see us paint. Give us some ideas. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen, one signed painting. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in today to the marvelous and majestic world of painting. I hope you've enjoyed Lighthouse on the Glorious Shores of Majestic Wonders. I tried to think of a longer title name, but just couldn't do it. Well, that concludes this episode. I hope you all have a marvelous and majestic day. Happy Easter to you all. God bless, Jesus loves you, and he is risen. Take care. Bye.
didn't know you're still here. Well, come on, let's go get a glass of lemonade. Forgive me, everyone. I was all out of little umbrellas. Ah, so good.